Elsewhere, Minnesota going on the road to take on Colorado. Pick it up in the second quarter. Chris Hoffman Bell back from injury and making a nice leaping grab there from Tanner Morgan. It was 11 of 17. Good to see Hoffman Bell back. Story of this game, though, two things. It was the ground game for Minnesota. Trey Potts, 121 yards, second straight game over 100. He is a he's serious back here, Howard. Yeah, really good back. He does a great job. Vision, patience, running through tackles, always falling forward. The Gophers outgained Colorado 441 to 63. Hmm. That good. was the other big story. 63 <laughs> total yards for Colorado in the entire game. 30 to nothing. The Gophers win it. PJ Flex team improving to two and one. We rallied rallied around the football. Um, we tackled really well. I thought our game plan was really good. I thought our players really adjusted from last week. Uh, I thought they swarmed, fly around. The whole word of the week was fun. You know, we need to go out there and have fun. They ran really hard. You know, they ran hard, broke tackles. It wasn't always pretty. Uh, but we knew if we could continue to keep the ball on the ground, wear them out you know, the best we possibly could, we had the best chance to win. Um, but, th- you know, these are young guys. I mean, every single one of those guys, I think, have four years of eligibility left. You know, so, um, you know, we, that wasn't the plan at the beginning of the year. Obviously, Mo was our plan, and those guys were kind of the backup plans. But when you look at it, and that, that's a credit to Kenny Burns, his staff, uh, or his, his running back room, and it's a credit to Muhammad Ibrahim. Muhammad Ibrahim's in, I'm two, he goes, I'm 2-0 and oh as a coach. And he is. He coaches those guys really hard in practice. He has set an expectation and a standard here at the University of Minnesota of what running back play should look like. Taking a look at our Rocket Mortgage built for success. Minnesota in the non-conference experiencing nothing but success. 21 straight non-conference wins. That includes bowl games. That is the longest such streak in the Big Ten in 88 years. It's time for the fifth longest in FBS since 1990 and it's the longest current such streak in the nation and this game was won by the defense i mean 63 yards allowed it's the fewest any big 10 team has given up against a a power five opponent this century yeah and considering where the defense was a year ago this is a big deal for Minnesota. And we've seen kind of this progressive build for what they've been able to do. And Jerry, you made the comment earlier about Minnesota's uh, offensive line being able to give Ohio State's defensive line some trouble. I think now it is Minnesota across the line of scrimmage on defense being able to give offenses some trouble. So it's been really good to see this progression. Those players worked really hard. I think we saw some of it at training camp, but uh, this is a team that's definitely on the rise right now. You know, defensively, Joe Rossi has simplified the package a little bit. He did it last year based on COVID and the he came into spring practice thinking that he wanted to continue to be a little bit more simple than he, than he had been. Uh, Joshua mentions the offensive line. I was really impressed with him against Ohio State. I haven't studied the, the tape for today. And then Trey Potts, I, I mean, <laughs> he, he's the real deal. So I, they continue to improve on defense. They run the ball on offense. That's kind of what P.J. wants to do. Guys, we walked away from there saying yeah. that this was yeah. a good football team. Right. Yes. And, and they're showing it. Even in the lost Ohio State. You see, this is a good football team and and a team that Ohio State or someone from the East is going to end up having a chance to see in a championship game. First road shutout for them against a Power 5 team since 1977. Really impressive performance.